I'm concert violinist Hannah Warmer and this is my tutorial about position changing. If you're looking through my tutorials and you haven't seen one about the technique that you want, then just make sure you comment below and I will try and make that video for you. So a lot of people ask about position changing and they want to do it and it's important on the violin because it gives you access to so many more notes. On the E string you've suddenly got more than these four notes in first position can go up very very high so it gives you more of a range but also it allows you to play the same note on multiple strings so first finger on the A string is B but I can also play that on a D string or on G string and each one of my strings has an individual voice so when I'm playing a piece of music and it says play B I can make that artistic decision, what is the tone I want to play, what string do I want to play it on. Sometimes the composer will actually write in the music what string he wants it on, but more often than not it's left to the violinist to choose. And so we make that decision based on, um, you can listen to recordings of other people and see what their choices were. Normally lots of different violinists make different choices. You can see what historically was the done thing, if there was something. Um, things like what was the instrument at the time, was it different strings to what you're playing tonight, today, so do you want to try and recreate that tone? And so every artist has a differing, differing opinion on what they want to produce, what sound they want to produce, and position changing just gives you that little bit more freedom. So, position changing. Um, the most crucial thing before you position change, just going to put my bow down, is making sure you have a solid technique. Now, depending on what school you're playing and who your teacher was, people teach technique in a different way, and I'd say none of them are really wrong. But the main thing, we, I'm going to be not changing your technique, but looking at the basis of the technique. And so a basis of technique would be that your violin is balanced well, that your position is balanced well, your, your body is balanced well, you're not leaning, you're not flopping, you're not overarching your back. I'm sitting down so but obviously can do it um, standing up. And that goes everywhere in your body, so balance is the key of violin playing. So whatever you've been taught, or whatever tricks or, or certain ways to hold the bow, the key is balance. We don't want to see a wrist like that, we don't want to see over tension here, and any of those sort of things will mean that not only is your playing not the best that it could be at this standard, but it's going to be difficult moving forward. So um, look back through my um, earlier videos to see about that balance in your playing, whether it's left hand or right hand. But let's presume that your playing is well balanced, that you're using the correct muscles just to the correct amount of degree, you're not overusing anything, you're not getting tension, you're not getting stiffness. Let's go from that premise and talk about position changing. Um, there's two things to remember when position changing. There's the physicality of it, and then there's the mentality of it. So the physicality is to actually physically be able to move your hand up the violin without tensing, and to do that in tune and in a controlled way. And the mentality is that you've then got to completely convert everything you're doing. So when you read a note that was first thing got on A string, it could very well now be third finger on D string, or it could be first finger on D string, because you can do it with any finger in any position. Um, we'll deal with the physicality first, because I find that the difficult part. Um, so, I'm going to pick my bow up. If I play you just four notes on the A string, the very first four notes on the A string, A, B, C, sharp, and D. I'm going to show you the shift from first position to third position. And I'm going to be putting my first finger, that's that finger there, where my third finger currently is. So everything will convert, my first finger will now be playing what was my third finger note. Um, now I did that pretty seamlessly, without much, you couldn't hear the shift. Um, and that's a good way to teach it. And then you can reduce back and see how much um, shift you want to put in there for artistic reasons. We'll talk about it later on. But let's just talk about the actual shifting around. So, number one foul, musician foul, is when people try and shift on the finger they're playing, which will sound something like this. 
not good. You can use it as a folk technique or something, but not good. We can have that portamento sound, but portamento is very different from sliding around the violin. Um, it's got limited control on it. So what we're going to do is shift on the back finger. I'm playing that finger and I'm going to shift to first finger. Um, so what I'm going to do is put my first finger down. I'm going to move it up. Uh, hopefully it's getting this on camera. I'm going to move it up and then it's just going to go there. If I play it with sound. I do that once more. So I'm just going to do a couple bows. going to do it slowly. And you heard it there because I was doing it nice and slow. Now how to reduce that mass, um, you know, the slight shift. It's already reduced a lot more than if I was going to go, but we can reduce it more. So this is it without reduction. And it's very minute, but uh, we can reduce it more. And the way to do it is you don't stop playing with the bow, always there's a big gap. You reduce the pressure and you reduce the pressure of the fingers. So you can hear the shift, no one else can hear the shift. I'll speed it up so... Now you can hear the slight click because I'm keeping it down, I can totally reduce that. much how to do it. Now, if you want to add for artistic reasons a little bit of a slide, you can decide how much pressure to put on with the bow. So, it's something to play around with, but by doing it portamento, which is sliding on the back finger, that means you can totally control the amount of slidey sound you want, to barely anything, to huge amounts and that's why a portamento is a more favored technique than just sliding up so a good solid technique would be whenever if you're writing in your own position changing never shift from say that finger that finger all the way up high very rarely do that try and shift you from one finger to another finger because that means you can creep around oops there we go um, the only time you would really shift one finger is if you're doing a tiny shift, so from perhaps um, B to C. So we're going to deal with the one finger shift, not the sliding from one finger to another one. Now, only really, as a rule of thumb, use this on small shifts, so a tone or a semitone. And the way you do it is... Play your first note. Then you just move your finger up. I'll show it once more. Now you can... You can do that sort of thing, but it's ten to use less. So when we would use a one finger shift, it's kind of where... Um, you want to not even show there's a shift sound. So you, you could be. And you can't hear the shift at all there. It just sounds like one continuous line. And so I would use a one finger shift on small shifts just to be able to extend your reach one or two notes. Um, I'll slow down that shift for you. So what we're gonna do is play a loud B. Reduce the pressure of the bow, reduce pressure of the finger. And you can hear it, so underneath your ear you can always actually hear the shift. That takes a lot of work. You have to be training your physicality, your, your fingers, your arm, your bow, but you have to train your ears. Because if you only hear as an audience member, you're only going to hear the actual notes. 
what you have to do is hear within the notes and hear the shift so that you can hear if you're shifting in tune and you have to be able to hear more than the audience so normally i mean people will say how do you get it says so no mistakes or it's not a yes or no thing the violin you're hearing your shifts your sense it's kind of like presuming that someone could climb a mountain with um, a blindfold on but how did you get up there what what the mountain climber obviously did was he checked his path as he went he saw the stones sometimes he's walking over rocky stones sometimes you know he could almost stumble but you know he kept his balance and that's kind of like performing a piece Every performance is different. Sometimes the orchestra did not do it the speed in rehearsal. That doesn't mean it's a mistake. It's not a, like throwing my hat down, oh, storm off kind of thing. It's a live performance. And that is the speed they're going with tonight. And that is the beauty. And that is the magic. And then we fit in with that. So um, mistakes normally happen when you perceive it as a mistake. When you perceive right or wrong, yes or no, black or white. At the same time, you could position change and it took you a millisecond longer to get there than it did last time you played it. If if you give up on the shift and kind of just play out of tune, then what you perceived as a mistake because you thought it all went wrong, it becomes a mistake, the audience hear it. If you position change and because you're human, it took you a millisecond longer to get there, and you carried on playing, it's just a different live performance than it was in rehearsal, than it was in practice, than it was the last performance, because every performance is different. And so the difference between right and wrong in concerts, or playing without mistake, or playing with mistake, is really to do in nine times out of ten with the artist's perception. So um, what you perceive as a mistake will become a mistake, because you are hearing it all before the audience. So if you're playing and you're self-doubting and you're saying, oh, I didn't quite get there, oh, I, I didn't shift properly, you didn't shift properly, did you? But if you see it as, oh, this is taking a bit longer, I'm just taking a bit longer, then that's what you're doing, aren't you? So um, it's not always the case, you know, if you're playing everything out of tune, then you are playing everything out of tune. But um, part of the practice process is really defining what you want in the piece, what shifts you want, but also becoming conf uh, confident and comfortable with the different variations of how that shift can be produced. So that's really important. Um, with position changing, there are multiple ways to do it. There's multiple sounds you can create. There's multiple tones. There are multiple ways of doing it, but the mechanics is what you need to practice and get comfortable with. How to produce that shift not just jumping, the worst thing you could do is just jumping around the violin or this, that kind of thing because that leaves you with two choices, right or wrong. And probably nine times out of ten it'll be wrong. So being fluid, being um, flexible, using good technique which isn't stiff, it is very uh, manipulative, very um, fluid. I think I already used that word. They are the keys to performing well and they're the keys to performing with success and confidence. And they're also the keys to great position changing. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you subscribe. And if you can't see anything that you need on the tutorials, make sure you get in contact with me and make sure you tell me what you want to see. Thank you very much. Bye.